Welcome back. I'd especially like to welcome my new subscribers and I hope you enjoy the content on my channel. If you missed the last video, there's a link up there now. You can go watch it first. Uh, in this episode, I'm going to endeavour to make myself some uh, step clamps for the mill. Uh, unfortunately, I have 8mm bolts in my table and uh, the 8mm version seem to be about three times the price of everything else. So uh, I don't have the money to buy them or I don't really want to spend that much money on a set. So I'm going to endeavour to make a couple. So follow me over to the bench and I'll show you what I've found. Alrighty, so uh, after checking out my usual material supply online and uh, seeing it was going to cost me well, an arm and a leg to buy a couple of pieces of material to make this out of, I decided to go out and see my favourite scrap dealer and came up with this piece of uh, mystery metal or as I heard someone else describe it the other day, scrap binium, which I thought was kind of clever. Uh, for the princely sum of 129 baht, uh, which is all of like, uh, it's a little over five bucks, five dollars Australian, five dollars fifty, something like that. That's 4.3 kilos. This is more than enough to make the, uh, what I want to use this for is to make the step posts that they sit on. I'm going to get a few out of that. Uh, I did have to order some new steel in a 25 by uh, 10 millimeter to make the the little arms out of so when it gets here we'll do that now I'm not going to make you sit through uh, the dressing up of this thing because this has been um, chopped up with a gas axe so I'll clean all that up and uh, cut it down to some usable lengths before I bring you back and get on with the milling and plus I'm still waiting for a tool which should be here the next day so we'll never have it all cleaned up uh, old mate wouldn't have enjoyed that much pretty bloody noisy. I cut it with the uh, with that 20 millimeter indexable cutter mill that I bought. Did a reasonable job of it but uh, I'll get on with fly cutting this. Well that's not good. Uh, there's a massive step in that. Just before Christmas I uh, stuffed up and I had the table power feeding backwards and I still had a tool in and it came across and got caught and I sat there for a couple of moments shaking before I realised what was going on and turned it off. So I'd say we pulled the head out of tram so i better fix that before I do any more. Well viewers, I think I've been watching too many inheritance machinery videos. I was having so much trouble uh, trying to realign this head. I thought I had it right. And then so I went over in a cut across this thing pretty much the same damn result I was getting before. So I decided that uh, a side project was uh, in order and I decided to put the fine adjuster on here that I meant to put on when I built the damn thing and never got, never did. Also in the inheritance machine or vein, I'll have to create a box of shame because that was the first one I made and it belongs in the bloody rubbish is where that belongs. But anyway, so now that I've finished that and I've spent a bloody day and a half ginning around with it, I'll have another crack at retramming that in the morning because it's getting a bit late in the day and my daughter will be ringing any time soon saying, time to go home, come and get me. Well, I've got to say, I should have done this a long time ago. Look at look at the gloss on this, the finish on it. I don't know if you can see that. Look at that. That is just bloody awesome. Uh, that's a 0.8 radius tip I just used. I did something really unconventional as I want to do to tram this head in today because let's face it, this table is not the best, flattest thing in the world to be trying to tram off. So, just hang on, I'll move this camera. What I did was I set up a magnetic base on here and put it up against the side here and then wound it, uh, loosened it all off just enough so to move then used the fine adjuster to move it three hundredths of a millimetre and then tried a single cut and that's what I got. So that's all it took to move it but you know before I'm trying to tap it around and all it took was that fine adjustment to get it right and now I am ultra ultra happy with that. Beautiful. 
I'm not sure how this is going to go. It, uh, that's been bouncing around between 29.9 and 30.1, so I'm just going to stick with that. And I've moved a couple of millimetres away from where I want to cut to allow me room to clean it up. And when I get the second piece out here, I'm going to have to take well, at least 10 millimetres off that. So I might try and cut that off with the saw, the slitting saw in the mill. I was tempted to try and cut this with the slitting saw, but I don't want to wear it out doing that. So here goes nothing. Jesus, that's getting awfully close already. What is going on there? That's fucking moved, you dirty bastard. Moved. Right. Another go. It's clamped in there as tight as I can clamp it. Damn it. I've run out of travel, I can't get all over the bottom, but I might be able to break it off. Alrighty, stopped and had a break for lunch and uh, had a think about this. Decided I'd take a different approach and wouldn't use the slitting saw. We'll cut it off this way instead. Sure beats a hacksaw. It's worth every damn buck I paid for this thing. Alrighty, so I've ended up with a fair bit of difference between these two, but we'll uh, level them up, get them the same. I don't own a decent engineering type, whatever these things are called, I can't even remember, I'm having mental blinks here. So I'm just going to use this little plastic one and one of my Chinese parallels. I just slide that, I just slid that up in there and got it nice and so they were nice and level and flat, tightened it all up. So, we'll machine the tops off like that. If you'd like to support this channel, consider becoming a patron. Every little bit helps, and just a small amount, they're okay. Or if you like, if you don't want to become a patron, consider that thanks button down there and occasionally give me a tip through that. Every little bit helps. Well, that's not quite as nice a finish as uh, as those sides had, but I can live with it. Alrighty, so I've got them all machined up and set up in there. And you might be looking and thinking, well, that's the wrong way around. You should have it up the other way. Well, the reason they're in there like that is I kind of believe that the steps can't be just 90 degree steps, right? Because that would leave them prone to be able to slide off. So what I think it needs is uh, a slight slope back on the top part of it backwards so that when you tighten it it'll pull it in and, and can't slip off. So to that length I looked around for something that I could cut them with because you can't do that with an end mill because if you tip it over on an angle it'll cut both things on an angle and I don't want that. So I want this one straight up and down, this one on an angle. So I found these. They're actually woodworking tools but they are carbide and they're pretty damn sharp. So I bought two different sizes, I think this one was a 6mm and this one's 10mm, something like that. So the idea, and the reason it's this way not the other way, is that allows me to cut back in this way on this face, but that way will be flat. And I'm going to start at the bottom, not at the top, because this thing has a tendency to, to skip and you know you wind it down and because of the slop in the lead screw, it'll, it won't move next year, it'll go bang and drop on me. and it, you can spend hours messing around trying to get so what I'm going to do is come down touch off on the top of here hit that as, as a zero and then I'm going to come up I think it was three millimeters and then move in and make my first cut across now I'll, I'll, I'll zoom up in a minute and show you what I've done I've sat down and worked all the steps out I worked it out at 25 I think it was steps but there's a couple missing at the bottom and the, the top so it ends up at only 22 steps and I'm going to cut both at the same time. Now I've no idea, I'm no math, like I said, I'm no mathematician. I don't know that I've got this right, but I'm hoping it'll work. So hang on, I'll move this camera up so you can see what I've done. Put it all on a spreadsheet and worked out all the values 
for the Z and X movements each step. So like I said, I'll be starting at the bottom. So it's step one through to step 22. You can't see the last two there, but that's the way I'm going to go about it. So I'll uh, set it up. It is no noise Sunday, but I'll, uh, I will set it up and have a little play with it and see how it goes. And uh, if it's too noisy, I'll leave it to go till tomorrow. Well, I've got to say that didn't make much noise at all, but there's something seriously wrong with the nod on this and I'll have to go back and reset it. I think I might have to come back and put another another one in the bottom down here anyway. Because that's a that's a massive miscalculation. It doesn't doesn't look like much of a step, so I might have to go and revisit that as well. Alrighty, progress report. I ended up having to reface these because they were just so far out it wasn't funny. And then I stuffed around and I couldn't figure out what was going on. Eventually I worked out that it didn't look right because I hadn't halved the diameter of the tool. Uh, and once I did that, I sort of got it right. Now this, these look way too wide because they probably are. Because I kept thinking that about 2 mil or so, or 1 bit, 1.8, wasn't deep enough. Now these, these steps up this way are now 2.5 millimeter, but these are way too wide here and, I'm, and that is two millimeters short of the x value it should have gone that way and what i'm having to do with this little cutter is go two mil short of it uh, in a conventional cut and then one mil in and a climb cut back and then one mil more to finish the pass to end it with one of these but i'm really tempted from this point on was going to calculate it again and only make a step this size and just cut these off because they just look way too big and don't give you enough steps. Well, I could leave them there, and, and this top one here just means you'd only have two pieces to grip it on here instead of three. But uh, uh, what to do, what to do. Not having one to copy isn't isn't uh, helping me any. But anyway, I'll push on. Alrighty, can't uh, can't say I'm not glad that's done. Probably I stuffed around with this for about seven hours yesterday, and it's been about maybe two and a half hours again this morning. What I settled on in the end was uh, a two and a half mil step this way, and a four mil step in this way. Now this one with a blue mark on it. I got about three or four steps for I think up here this morning. I kept looking at that one, thinking that doesn't look right. And I stuck the ruler on it, realised it was only three and a half millimetres and not four, like everything else. So I had to come down and recut that one and then recut the three or four above it and continue on. This one here was, oh god, five or five and a half, so originally, so I've recut that to four mil. And what I'll do with the remainder here is I'll come back out here four millimetres and I'll just mill the end off it, knock these in and mill the end off it, clean it up that way. Now on reflection, after being able to stand here and look at this, I'm pretty sure I could have made these these steps in here maybe two millimeters and this would have ended up three or three and a half three and a bit you know and I ended up a lot more steps in it but I think I changed I changed over to this uh, 10 mil cutter this morning because of that little uh, eight millimeter one or six millimeter one I chipped one corner of it and it was not cutting real well down in here so I, I swapped them over but anyway being what it is I'm relatively happy of how that's come out I really decided that uh, very early in the piece that deburring these steps would be a damn nightmare and the easiest way to do it would be to fly cut the sides after I'd cut all these in here but I'll wire buff these as well and uh, because I want to blue all these so uh, these are well once I flip it over and do the other side and then deburr these edges I'll be done well I've got to say these have come out really nice um, it's a bit of a shame really that I may never get to finish this project but uh, I'm going to weigh up my, my uh, options and see how we go. But anyway, if you've been enjoying this video up to this point I'd really appreciate it if you'd give it a great big thumbs up and smash that like button. kind of helps me out. Uh, now this is not where I intended to finish this video but if you didn't see the last one uh, I now have an issue with complaints from the neighbours, re noise and believe you me I've made a lot of noise making this. So I'm going to have to curtail things for a while. Uh, there are threats that you know, they might go to immigration. If they do that, I've got to have all sorts of problems and get deported. So I'm going to have to stop doing what I'm doing immediately and uh, consider my options. One of them is to pack everything up and move it away, but that's, uh, that's not turning me on any. 
But anyway, thanks for watching and I hope you enjoyed it and uh, I'll see you next time whenever that is. Bye bye.